The first one is the COVID business helpline. It's actually to provide uh, additional uh, avenue for business related concerns where companies can raise to us, navigate the government advisories, and fully um, leverage on the business support measures. So we can contact us through the email address and the contact number shown on the screen. Second initiative actually is in partnership with uh, Enterprise Singapore called the Global Connect at SBF. This initiative is to help companies to internationalize. So whether you're at the information gathering stage or you are already having operations in the country, you can contact us. So you can contact us at globalconnect at sbf.org.sg and the hotline shown on the screen. So without further ado, I will pass the time to Sandy to share more about the Alibaba ecosystem. Sandy, please. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, hope everyone is um, safe and healthy at home. Okay, so um, so first of all, let me introduce uh, myself. I'm Sandy from Innovative Hub. And uh, so today, the presentation, um, we will have two speakers, myself and my colleague, Tani. Uh, Tani, you want to say hello? Hi. Yes, okay, so um, I will basically touch on the first half of the presentation, which is focusing on the e-commerce trend and e-commerce today. So without further ado, let me share my screen so that everyone can take a look at our presentation slides. Okay, everybody can see my slide, right? Um, okay. Sure. So innovative hub, right? Yes, we are the we are the global service partner for Alibaba.com. Usually for offline seminar at this point of time, I would like to ask questions because I can interact and see some reaction from the ground. But unfortunately, this time round I can only see myself and the screen. But uh, if you have any question, please uh, continue to interact with us. I think you can type the question in the chat box. Okay, so for Innovative Hub, we started in 2016 as a global service partner in Singapore for about four years already. And um, our growth, we have uh, started our Vietnam Ho Chi Minh office for about one year. We are into our second year in Ho Chi Minh. Okay, so of course, um, the, our team in Singapore, we consist of about 11 of us now. And Ho Chi Minh, we have a bigger team. Okay, so as we continue to grow into the region, it is also our company direction that we continue to help SME, not only in B2B, but also in B2C and all channels of digitalization. Okay, so these are some of our um, profile of the company. And this is my beautiful Singapore team and our Vietnam team. Of course, um, some, some employees have uh, changed. Okay, so our humble achievement since um, about we started late of 2016. So since 2018, we have been receiving uh, multiple awards from our principal Alibaba.com. Okay, so in 2019, we continue our uh, achievement from our principal Alibaba.com. And we have been very active in the local market. Um, working closely with the Singapore government. As you can see, in 2018, uh, we launched our first um, initi initiative with the, back then it was called Spring Singapore. Okay, so we helped uh, to enroll 140 companies on board to Alibaba.com. And in 2018, we also became the digital partner for Singapore Manufacturing uh, Federation uh, for FHA 2018, which some of you, when you came in earlier, you have seen some videos about um, about the FHA 2018. 2019, we are also glad to be able to work with SSG to, for a grant that helped 250 companies to onboard again our platform, Alibaba.com. And this year, 2020, we have also gotten, uh, we are also working on a pre approved project. We will touch more about all these projects uh, later of the presentation. And this time round, this year, we are going to access 150 companies. Um, to onboard Alibaba.com. Okay, so um, just to show you some, sorry, just to show you some pictures of our outreach in Singapore and Vietnam. Uh, 
uh, okay. And uh, we also have an upcoming event uh, because of our presence in Vietnam and Singapore as a partner of Alibaba.com. We are able to kind of link um, some enterprise together. So we are having a business matching session on the 8th this month, which is coming Friday and on the 15th. Okay, so if you need more details, um, you can contact us for the business matching event. Okay, so after introducing ourselves, Innovative Hub, uh, I'm sure you guys have a pretty idea that uh, we actually help a lot of uh, SME in the local market to onboard our platform Alibaba.com. What exactly is Alibaba.com and what is the ecosystem of Alibaba Group? I will touch on it later in my presentation. But what I, want, what I would like to share with you now will be some e-commerce trend and e-commerce today. Okay, so for, um, for those who are you know, like, um, pretty new to e-commerce, there are actually six basic types of e-commerce. Sorry, I just interrupt. Penny, maybe you can, you can switch to your profile pics because I also feel very funny looking at you, <laughs> looking at me. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there are so six basic types of e-commerce, right? So the first three, B2B, B2C, and C2C are the more common ones that uh, we are more familiar with, right? Okay, so B2B, of course, refer to business to business, B2C, uh, business to consumer. And in the current um, environment, I'm pretty sure most of us are doing our shopping online, right? Because we can't go pretty much go anywhere and we have to get our groceries and all the necessities online. So you should be pretty familiar with B2C. And C2C, of course, refers to some of our um, sites like Carousel or this. Okay, so what is it? E-commerce is an electronic way of shopping, right? It's an electronic way of, um, of trade show, of selling, of buying. And the global e-commerce trade, uh, e-commerce sales is projected to reach 27 trillion by this year. All right, e-commerce growth, okay? So some of us which uh, maybe you have not really been uh, active in the e-commerce market and you are thinking if you should get your first foot into this uh, space, look at the data that I'm showing you, right? Okay, so this two chart is from two different, um, two different sites, but you can see that the numbers are actually pretty same. <clears throat> Let's take 2020, 2021, for example, okay, next year. You can see that the both charts tell you that by 2021, we are going to expect global e-commerce to reach about 5 trillion. Okay, and then, um, so now we know that e-commerce is growing and uh, if we should um, be participating in this uh, environment, so look at where are all the growing markets. I'm pretty sure that uh, business people like yourself, you should have uh, some uh, direction, some marketing or some business direction on some of the markets that you would like to enter, right? So looking at this two chart maybe tells you some story. Let me go into more details. Okay, so in 2019, which is last year, right, China, of, uh, the top global e-commerce market of course is China with 1.9 trillion in e-commerce sales. And this amount is actually three times greater than, <coughs> greater than US uh, at number two. And of course, China surpassed US in 2013. And since then, it has been widening the margin. On its own, China actually represents 54.7% of the global e-commerce. So while we look at the second chart, right, the top 10 uh, countries, growing countries, out of the top 10 growing countries, right, we can see that actually six of the countries are from the Asia Pacific region. Led by India, of course, Philippines, and uh, routed by all these countries, Okay, of course, Latin, oh, sorry. Latin America also boosts the overall growth and together with uh, Mexico and Russia. Okay, so these are the top growing markets. Uh, okay, I really prefer the offline seminar because I can interact with you people. But anyway, so uh, why my slide is like this because uh, I'm not sure how many of you actually know uh, which other country in the ASEAN market. So, uh, Let's make the webinar more interactive and communicative. Uh, while I released, haven't released the result, 
some of you may not know that actually uh, these are the top, top 10 countries in ASEAN. Okay, of course, in these top, uh, I'm sorry, in these 10 ASEAN countries, right, there are some de more developed countries like ourselves. There are also um, some which are still developing, right? So the forecast of um, the whole e-commerce market in the ASEAN region is as such. Okay. Okay, so um, then we go into more detail of the top six um, ASEAN country, growing country. Of course, uh, Laos, Myanmar, Cambodia, Brunei, uh, maybe they are not growing as fast in, in terms of internet uh, penetration and e-commerce growth. Okay, so look at these six countries, right? You can probably tell that Indonesia is um, one of the um, very potential market. And because of the Singapore small population, of course, our internet user has already, uh, I can't remember the last report, but I, I think our country uh, internet penetration stands about 80 and above. So there's really not much internet penetration growth per se for Singapore. But uh, look at the e-commerce numbers, right? The e-commerce market size. You can tell that um, five years ago, we are only at 1 billion, right? And in another five years time, this amount is supposed to be 5.4, forecast to be 5.4 billion. Okay, so if you are still not too sure of um, whether you should uh, step foot into e-commerce now or get a little bit uh, into this environment, uh, rest assured that all our governments, especially the Asians, right? ASEAN um, government are doing their very best to tie up some loose end. Uh, so this ASEAN e-commerce pack was actually signed in 2017 to help facilitate some of the, um, some of the trading necessities within our region. So the objective, of course, is to facilitate cross-border e-commerce transaction, right? So, um, uh, so, so we talk about a little bit about today, right? Um, in in today COVID nineteen environment, of course, all the uh, supply chain has been affected, right? Uh, so of course, um, we need to facilitate this cross-border e-commerce in order to keep the selling and the trading going. Um, yeah. So we the 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 Asia pack is the ASEAN pack also wants to create an environment of trust and confidence because uh, not all countries, like I mentioned, not all countries are as developed, right? So um, maybe they are payment gateway, um, the custom clearance, everything is not as um, till date or, or tip top as the Singapore side, right? To increase the inter uh, internet penetration, which you have seen in the earlier slide, and to deepen the cooperation between all the member states. Right, so with all these, um, all these agreements signed on e-commerce, right? It's definitely, uh, it definitely tell us that the government is very supportive and interested to help all the com all the companies to to go into this environment. Okay, um, am I going too fast? Everybody, all right? Anyway, I can't really. S I I'm on full screen now, so I can't see your comments. Okay, so um, what is the e-commerce um trend today? Right, there is 10 e commerce trends leading the way. So, just now, like I asked, um, I believe most of us, I think we have about 70 or so attendees in, today, uh, in this webinar today. I'm sure at least 50% of us has, um, has really go into the online B2C shopping for the past weeks because even like myself, when I use, uh, I always shop online. But this month, last month, has really increased my shopping online. And till date, I already have like four NTUC delivery to my place. Okay, so uh, augmented reality, right? Uh, AR has really enhanced the reality of online shopping. So there are some um, industry and some trade that has already started using AR. Uh, for example, um, IKEA, all this, right? And the interior designers. So... Um, their, their business nature and the products that they sell. AR is very important because it helps consumers like us to visualize how the item will look in our house. And of course, there will be a growing volume for voice search. Why so? Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you actually shop on Taobao. 
Okay, because I do. And um, I'm really glad that I can speak into the Taobao app now because I can't really type Chinese. So it really helps in my shopping experience. And of course, big data plays a big part in creating our experience, right? So big data, um, uh, later we also little take touch a little bit into the big data because uh, um, today if you realize our smartphone is so smart, right? Everything that you search or you maybe send something on WhatsApp or something, tomorrow you see your Facebook, you see your Google or social media or anything. They will start pushing relevant products and uh, all this to you because they know this is your interest level. <laughs> Chat box, um, yeah, okay, so today we, um, we, when we shop, we don't have patience, right? Uh, it's like, uh, actually, I, will, I, okay, no offense, uh, but just to quote my shopping experience on um, NTUC, right? For example, because I mentioned, um, because there is no uh, live chat uh, available and you know, a lot of times when I check out my, uh, check out my order, then tomorrow when my delivery is supposed to come, then the, the, like for example, I order 10 items. In the end, maybe six items will be <clears throat> out of stock and I cannot chat with anybody to add on to my order before the delivery comes, right? So, so to, have, uh, to have a chat box, I think it um, will enhance the shopping experience of consumers. Mobile shopping, of course, right? Uh, most of our shopping is done on our smartphone now. More ways to pay, yes, of course, uh, PayPal, credit card, international, everything will increase, um, will increase the, the chances of the consumer buying over that marketplace. API-driven e-commerce, yes, uh, today a lot, of, um, a lot of people are looking to API because um, whatever you post in one marketplace, I prefer to use the same information and the same thing to be able to be on other uh, marketplaces. So this is actually for, is the ease, uh, it is to ease the, the work on the seller side. Customer response to video, of course, um, today uh, just having photo on marketplaces is really not uh, sufficient. We need to have videos uh, to show the consumer how to use the products and everything. Subscription, yes, of course, uh, you, you know when you shop on um, Shopee, Lazada, all this, right? Then they give you cashback, they give you vouchers, coupons, so that you keep coming back to the same place to buy. Last but not least, which is um, one of the most important points that I want to share is B2B is actually growing and changing. Okay, so maybe um, till now, you, you, you can't really differentiate the difference between B2B and B2C, right? So actually, B2B um, is, to, is to sell in bulk to other businesses or other smaller businesses or other distributors that, uh, that can help you distribute in other countries. B2C is uh, much more for the consumers in mostly the local market. If not, you can do cross-border e-commerce into some overseas market if you have the capability. Right? So why is B2B changing? Um, so traditionally, people always feel that B2B uh, is, uh, is very difficult to buy business, buy for business online. Uh, so people still like to go to trade shows, exhibition, the traditional way of doing business. But this whole environment is going to change. And why is it going to change? Because today, a lot of our working adults are actually millennials, right? In fact, uh, my colleague later who is sharing, uh, he's, actually, uh, he's actually after the 90s, right? So um, all these uh, new, all these very young generation coming into the working space, they prefer an uh, easier way of uh, buying and buying for business, right? So B2B is going, to be, uh, is going to grow and improve more online because of the bias that is changing globally. Okay, so far so good. We still have about like 70 slides. Just kidding, okay? The next few slides are pretty fast uh, just to show you some... Um, just to show you that uh, the global pandemic uh, is making an impact to all of our lifestyle globally, right? So if you think uh, of your lifestyle now, of course, we are going to the shop less. Uh, it's not I don't want to go. In fact, we cannot go, right? We can only go out and buy necessities like food. And uh, we are shopping online more. So we take uh, the, four of the, one of the, the four of the biggest country, uh, for example. You can see that... Um, 
Of course, uh, we take China for example, for this chart, you can see that um, there is a huge increase of people who is going, uh, there's a huge, num huge percentage of people that is going to shop less and there's a huge percentage of people that is uh, shopping online more. Um, I can tell from this chart that why China percentage is at the higher percentage is because China itself um, is more digitalized and e-commerce and online shopping is more convenient and popular compared to Germany and UK, right? Okay, and the next chart we are looking at, um, have you delivery purchased any of these products instead of offline because of COVID-19, right? So just now I have asked, so obviously we are all, all most of us are doing our shopping online uh, because we are avoiding the supermarket. Um, actually, I have not been to the supermarket since um, the CB, the circuit breaker. I don't know how it looks like, but I, I saw on social media that it's quite terrible. Okay, so what are we buying more? Of course, because of COVID-19 again, right? Uh, we are of course buying more uh, household products, uh, food and drinks, especially the ready-to-eat kind of food and drinks and for health and hygiene. Mm, okay, so if you, if you take a look at this chart, right, uh, it, show you, it shows the growing categories in e-commerce in US as of March uh, 2020, 2020, year on year. Uh, so you can see that <coughs> the whole world is shopping for gloves. Uh, bread machine, I'm not too sure. Maybe because uh, they are staying at home, so they like to make their own bread. Okay. Okay, so uh, I wouldn't really go too much, uh, but I, I just want to tell you that uh, the, the global pandemic is making a difference to our lifestyle. <clears throat> so definitely when we, when we cannot travel, all these products we're not buying, right? We don't buy suitcase, we don't buy luggages anymore. So all these are on the declining category. Later, I'm going to also share with you uh, what are the growing categories on, <clears throat> excuse me, on our marketplaces. Okay, so this is uh, important because you can see the increase in the traffic on the e-commerce traffic worldwide. Uh, February to March, you can see that there is uh, almost a 1 billion increase. Okay, mm, everyone, okay? I'm not changing, I'm not, uh, I'm not, throwing too, too much um, numbers into everyone's head, right? Okay, so let's um, go into something more close to heart for us, which is our Alibaba.com March Expo. So while a lot of, a lot of um, people feel that um, there's nobody, there's no demand for anything um, now, actually it's not so because uh, the March Expo still takes place uh, last two months ago, March, on our marketplace alibaba.com so as you can see these are the statistics of the gmv the orders the paid buyers and sellers almost every category is increasing and then we have um, and then we have um, the top 10 regions and countries uh, so this still this data still refers to our March Expo statistics on Alibaba.com marketplace, and the slide. Uh, I apologize because the slide is in Mandarin because it's for actually it's internal sharing. Mm. But I just cut a a few pictures for your reference. Okay, so for those who can read Chinese, you can take a look at the picture. Okay. Next, we have the top three um, ASEAN countries in GMB, right? And the top industry and category of products that are growing, that has growth in March Expo. Okay, so um, don't worry too much because uh, I, have, I have also informed SMS that um, we will be sharing the slides. Okay, so online B2B trends, right? So on our platform, our platform is a B2B marketplace. So what you can see that the keyword search for example, I have highlighted some very obvious um, increase for your easy reference. Chocolate most, I believe all of us are baking at home. 
from uh, from uh, non cook to master chef now everyone right because everybody is buying all these things because of COVID nineteen. So this trend is actually also this trend actually also um, appears on our B two B marketplace. You can see right the the graph, the blue uh, graph. It actually is actually for the past twelve months. So you can see that all these things are actually on an increase. Of course, the most, uh, the most increase will have to be mass, right? Can you see? Can you all see that it's like forty one thousand percent? This is our index, okay? It's, it doesn't refer to the absolute number, but of course you can see that the previous month for the past previous month. Nobody actually buy this on Alibaba.com. But because of the pandemic, everyone is trying to buy. And that's also a reason why uh, Alibaba.com has stepped in to impose a lot of, um, it's not restriction, but they want to be, uh, they, want, they want the seller on the platform to be selling the correct and approved mask. Okay, we have 50 more slides to go. <laughs> okay, so the third um, portion we're going to talk about is, of course, um, embrace uh, global e-commerce with Alibaba.com, right? So how this marketplace is going to, um, is going to, what's the objective and the purpose of this B2B marketplace and how it's going to help your business uh, take its first digitalization journey. Okay, so first of all, we start with the ecosystem of Alibaba Group. Okay, so it's a very busy slide right because um, under the Alibaba business group there's so many business entity okay so we have three main pillars digital media and uh, entertainment we have core commerce and local services and we have four horizontal um, four horizontal that supports these three pillars okay so of course for innovative park from where we represent uh, who we rep which entity we represent is actually alibaba.com in Singapore and Vietnam so as for the rest of the entities some of you uh, may know better than me because uh, you, you could have traveled more to China than me. So uh, I will only touch a little bit more on the core commerce pillar. Okay, so under the core commerce pillar, of course, uh, there are some very familiar marketplaces, B2C marketplaces like Taobao, I mentioned just now, AliExpress, Timor and Timor Global, right? Lazada, uh, one of the top shopping uh, site in Asia. Okay, so Alibaba.com is B2B. And it's the first business, uh, so-called the first e-commerce business entity of Alibaba.com, uh, of Alibaba Group. Yao Liu Papa, e Liu Papa, you can see 1688.com, right? That's actually the um, domestic, domestic Alibaba.com in China. It's for the, 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 lo the Chinese local to trade among themselves domestically. Of course, for the horizontal, we have the payment gateway. And uh, the pay payment and finance, like and financing, uh, China Logistics uh, is a logistic company initially started um, without any physical inventory. The purpose of uh, China Logistics is a data-driven logistic uh, company to address the capability and the information gap between logistics suppliers. Okay, then we have Alimama, which is a marketing and data management platform. Uh, last but not least, uh, Alibaba Cloud. Alibaba Cloud is also, uh, they also have a local entity in Singapore and they are also um, quite active in the SME market in Singapore. And uh, we have been trying to, in fact, we're supposed to have a joint event with Alibaba Cloud um, before, I think we plan to do it in March before all the restriction for COVID-19 begin. So we have to postpone the seminar okay so far so good anything about the ecosystem uh, we can maybe you can also ask me later but um, I won't be able to provide too much details because um, that is that is not uh, the entity that uh, we represent okay so moving on introduction to alibaba.com um, for the past 30 slides that I've shared I have not touched about <clears throat> this fantastic B2B marketplace, right? So we are going to <clears throat> dive into the marketplace now. Okay, what about Alibaba.com, right? Alibaba.com was founded in 1999 and is the first business sector like I mentioned. And now he has become the world leading cross-border B2B e-commerce platform, right? So Alibaba continued to be ranked number one. In fact, um, 
there are some other B two B market places, but they are not as um, they don't have that traffic that high traffic, and they are not as um, popular as Alibaba.com and most of them only focus on the individual countries. Okay, I'm sure you know, uh, some of you may know the some other B2B platform. Okay, so of course we are ranked, uh, we are also named the best B2B website in the world, eight times in a row. Okay, so the landscape of Alibaba.com, right, so uh, we have 150 million registered members. Okay, so when we say registered members, right, you could be one of the registered members um, tomorrow because uh, it's free to register an Alibaba.com account if you just want to be a buyer. That means if you want to do sourcing and buy on Alibaba.com. Okay, then uh, the, our marketplace spread across 190 region. It doesn't mean that we have 190 offices around the world, okay? So around the world, uh, for Alibaba.com, in most of the region, they appoint partners like ourselves because Alibaba.com believes in localization. So they will, in each important country, allocate a business partner like us. So they call us a global partner or a China partner. Okay, so we have 17 multi-languages on the platform. So don't worry of uh, language, whether you are doing business with a Turkey, with a Spanish or with a German. They, the platform is able to translate uh, the language into English for our understanding. Across 40 industry with 5,900 product categories and 12 million active buyers uh, and 30,300,000 000, active inquiries per day. Okay, so this is also the growth of our buyers over the past, um, should be five years for now, but this data we got in 2018. So for 2016, 2017, and 2018, this is the growth of the buyers and the order size. Okay, so as a business owners or business development or marketers or you know salespeople, we are very interested to know who are the countries that are buying on Alibaba.com, right? So this is our top 20 countries that are buying. Uh, number one is actually um, US, followed by, you can read, right? And on the right of the chart is a top 10 industry that are popular on the platform. That means what people are buying on Alibaba.com. Okay, then we further break down into the individual countries. Like for example, um, maybe Vietnam, I talk about Vietnam. So for Vietnam, uh, you can see you can see on below is according to the below uh, legend is according to the number of valid inquiries by countries. So the buyers from Vietnam, what are the top uh, industry that they are interested in. So the Vietnamese are Vietnamese buyer are mainly buying beauty, personal care, food, agriculture, home and garden and construction and real estate from this category. But uh, for Alibaba.com, the categories are pretty broad. So you really need to go into the platform to to know exactly uh, what is the subcategory of all these main category. So this is how we read the top industry by countries. Uh, more examples to share for your reference. I'm sure so far I have touched on some countries that your business may be interested in. Yep. Okay, so top 10 countries that are sending inquiries. Okay, so just now what happened in the past three slides is they are the top buyers and the top categories that the buyers are buying. Over here is who are sending inquiries on Alibaba.com. Okay, so we specially highlighted Canada, Australia, and Malaysia because they are under this um, Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is supposed to um, give you uh, more leverage on the shipping because they are under the free trade agreement. Okay, so um, the purpose of Alibaba.com, right? The purpose of Alibaba.com is to remove some traditional business expenses. Earlier when I speak, I mentioned that uh, for most of the B2B um, environment, we still like to do it traditional way, like attending trade shows, attending exhibition. Uh, and um, we still prefer to maybe open a shop 
to sell our items. Uh, there isn't uh, okay. That, of course, um, there is there's a small percentage of B two B uh of business that is already moving online, but the main bulk of uh, businesses are still they still feel that the bread and mortar is um you know to do to do things this way. Um, uh, but we are not saying that uh doing things this way is not correct. We are just Alibaba.com just provide you an additional way and an additional channel so that you um because this channel Alibaba.com is going to incur lesser expenses than your normal way. So yeah, you can spend on other things, right? Okay, so uh I think most of you are more experienced than me, uh regarding trade show and exhibition. So you know how much you have to spend on all this. And if you are a rental, uh if, if you own a rental shop like today, uh in in, in today environment and today's situation, uh we still have to pay renter, even though we cannot go to the office, right? Uh you still have to pay renter. The all the coffee shop owners are still uh the, the stores are still paying renter, but they can only do they can only sell to the Taobao crop now, right? Nobody die in. So when their business is affected, the renter still goes on. Okay, so and of course traditional advertising. Uh, I believe most of us are reading Straits Times on uh, online now. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe most of us are right. Okay, and we really don't uh, we do not really listen to radio now. At least for me, okay, for me, uh, the only time I listen to radio is when I drive to and for work. Okay, so all these are the traditional expenses that businesses spend. So Alibaba.com, like I mentioned and like I say, it just provides you with an additional channel by creating a bridge between you and your global buyers. So by bringing the trade show and exhibition online, it's an online marketplace. So for you to exhibit your company, your products, uh, so that your global buyers can just come online and find you they don't have to take an aeroplane, fly to uh, China, fly to Dubai, fly to Singapore, anywhere, just to sample your product or just to look at your products and attend an exhibition. Okay, so this is just by uh, so so this method is just to ease off some of the traditional way, right? So we create a bridge online to help you connect to your global buyers, and to, of course, if you are a buyer, we also help you to connect to your suppliers. Okay, so far so good, everyone, because uh, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> so from this point onwards, uh, I hope uh, I hope you have liked what I've shared earlier, all the numbers and statistics. So from this point onwards, I'm going to pass on to my colleague Penny, uh, so that you all don't fall asleep uh, hearing my voice for the past uh, maybe 30 minutes already. So my colleague will take you through the functions of Alibaba.com, how does it uh, help you to become a seller on our marketplace? Okay, over to you, Kenny. All right, thanks, Andy. All right, so um, I hope everyone is still with us right here, right now. And I'll talk to you about the main point and the main um, importance and how we can leverage on Alibaba.com as a business to um, expand and get more buyers internationally. So first of all, Alibaba.com, you need to understand that it's a platform that you do not um, require to pay commission. It goes by a yearly subscription basis and it works like a global exhibition platform, whereby when you attend trade show, you set up a store there, you don't, you don't just uh, stand there and wait for buyers to uh, come and approach you. You have to do whatever you take. The business model between traditional business and digital business is the same. You don't, many, many people have the misconception of like, okay, I'm gonna do e-commerce now, I'm gonna uh, post my product, I'm gonna just post and wait for people to come and click on it. But you need to understand that you need to let people find you. If people cannot find you, then you have no traffic, you have no exposure. You know, just like you put your, you open up a shop in a very Ulu place, at the backyard, no one walk past there. Your there's no business for you. You need to know how to uh, operate the digital marketing, the SEO on the platform too itself, in order for you to boost your traffic 
all the way up to the top rankings, that's where you, your competition is there. And the good thing about e-commerce is it doesn't matter whether you're a big, well-known company, an NMC, or you're just a new startup with a very little product. It gives you the same competitive edge. Why? Because the same method can be done on a small company and a big company. You guys can compete on the same page, on the same level, with the same pricing, with the same quality of stuff. People, like uh, when they look at you, they look at the how you well uh, you dedicate yourself on the online platform. So I'm going to share with you the 13 main functions on Alibaba.com that you can use and how you can go about using it as a gold supplier to increase yourself um, better. Okay. So first of all, it's about the mini site that Alibaba.com provides for the gold supplier. It's customizable. First of all, you can design it according to what you sell. You can also um, showcase your product, showcase in terms of your exhibition uh, capability, your product category. You can add a company introduction video and you can also write, write up a short story. And you can also showcase your current client health. Like for example, if you're selling something to SIA, no one knows your company name, but most people in the world, they know about SIA. They, they, they look at you, oh, you're selling to SIA, you're providing to them for over 10 over years. Oh, they have a trust in you. So when on the internet, people, they can't see, no, they, can, they can see, they can only see. They can't feel, they can't touch, they can't smell. So designing and uh, making your things look attractive is very important for your ongoing buyers to come and look for you, okay? So you can design it and then there's a language translation uh, feature. Let's say someone from Vietnam, they, they don't know, understand English, they can click the translate button and they can send you an inquiry with online services, live chat later I explain through our uh, Ali Supplier app. Okay, next, number two, posting your product. Has a go supplier on Alibaba.com, product posting is unlimited. Uh, I would encourage my clients, you know, they just don't just post uh, one, one product. They try to post as many products as possible. Everything and anything that they think they want to sell and they think that they can sell. Posting is not so difficult because if you look at it in a way, um, how do I show you? Look in a way, the more you post, the more chance that people can find you, people can search for you and you can get uh, more people's attention. So for example, if you have a range of product of or maybe five, then uh, you might want to think about maybe uh, your friends, your partners, they have products that they are in the same trade, same industry that they want to sell. At the same time, you can ask them, oh, do you want to collaborate with me? Because I have Alibaba.com account, unlimited product posting. The more, but you must post only according to your industry. For example, you're selling, um, you're selling shoes, okay? You, suddenly, you cannot suddenly go and post something related to food. That is not related to your industry. So don't go and well, everything also take and just sell. Okay, take something related to you, something that you can cope with, and then uh, you can find business opportunity from there, okay? Next, setting the correct keyword. Okay, setting the correct keyword is very important. Uh, why? Because uh, I find it very funny, sometimes we have the misunderstanding of certain product. Even though we might be expert in, in certain industry. Let's say for example, okay, this is, this is a mouse. We call it mouse in Singapore. But uh, in maybe US, right, they, they call it red. Maybe in the German, okay, in the Europe, they call it mice. So many, many different country people have different understanding of um, certain product. So you need to understand keyword trending and you need to use long tail keyword and knowing that this keyword is uh, being searched the most on Alibaba.com. And uh, most people, the customer behavior, they search this. But of course, if you're selling something uh, related to mouse and then you pull and put something called iPhone because you know on the internet, they keep searching iPhone, then that's not related. Then you will not get the ultimate traffic that you want 
okay and also using the correct keyword is very important because uh once there was a, a, a case okay i just explained to you lah, because i can't show you now uh there were once someone uh one of my clients they used the keyword um excavator yes uh which company name is that uh? let me think about it hitachi excavator yes so we are educated in a way that we put hitachi and then excavator the brand name and the product name later but when we search online and look at the keyword trend it actually shows that people search excavator first and then the brand name at the back so by doing that if you if you're not uh, related to if you do not study the analytics the data the traffic and then you just blindly put hitachi excavator you only get half of the view or even less but if you study the data that we, we give you and I explain and advice to you you can actually change your keyword name to excavator then hitachi in that way you can get more traffic and the results that you want okay yeah so uh, for example this is one of our clients uh Hokwa bird nest i believe a lot of you have heard of them before and how if they use the correct keyword and the optimization that we provide and advise them they can reach rank one so for example you see the product bird nest and there's over eleven thousand products using this keyword bird nest and when imagine the traffic that they get when they're rank one so e-commerce is a step-by-step -step procedure first you need to boost your traffic when a lot of people see you then they will they try to find out from you they will click on your product and then they will try to uh, if they are more interested in you then they can leave inquiries down and that's where the inquiries is become a, like a warm lead for your sales to go and convert it into a business deal okay four receive and reply to inquiries only go supplier on alibaba.com have the ability to receive and quote the buyer inquiry all other uh, free member and um accounts right they are individual free accounts right they are not able okay to see the buyer inquiry to understand where the buyer is coming from and add them context so the, the, the information that you receive are very specific you get the the country that they are coming from you know that this country uh is it really need in need your product does your product have the market to, to market in this country let's say for example vietnam are you gonna sell um maybe a laptop in vietnam um is, is this market uh good for this your product and next you can know the uh, company name of the buyer so you can go and cross reference via linkedin via google via facebook to see hey, is that business legit are you talking to someone that is real to understand the potentiality of your client okay so and if you as a free member you post product you're not re you're not able to receive any inquiry you, you're able to receive inquiry but you're not able to reply to them you can't even view them and when you try to view them you will say uh, sorry to invite to protect our users improve buying experience please upgrade now this is to protect all our gold suppliers as they they are paying for a service like this we cannot expect the the free members to also enjoy the same okay next assign sub account so many big business uh, in singapore in, in of the world they have a not just one person handling their sales team they have a different different people handling either different categories uh different market okay this is where the sub account they come into play so for example maybe the sales manager or the marketing manager or even the boss can have control over the sub, uh, master account and assign the sub account to individual um sales representative for them to to uh, distribute the feedback and monitor it more effectively this way uh more most of the inquiries that you receive they will not be uh like a miss missed out a uh, slow response uh forgot to respond replied wrongly uh, so each person right can have the more uh, expert views on how to reply to each certain products okay next we also have uh, our list supplier app that we uh, it, it works like a whatsapp facebook messenger when your customer they send you an inquiry through live chat through inquiry your uh, app will pop up we receive the notification like let's say okay sandy send me a message she wants she wants to find out uh, what's the price of uh 10 jar of cookies 
and uh, what's the delivery uh, order, what's the MOQ, everything. And then you can reply it on the go, anytime you are, uh, as long as it's not sleeping. Uh, okay? So you can reply it uh, very uh, fun bit, convenient. Okay? Multi-language translation. Okay, this is a very important part. <clears throat> so, of course, that, uh, when we talk about international um, trade, one of the biggest uh, challenge is that sometimes our language, we can't, we can't really uh, communicate too well, except for some common words. So it's very important that we have this language translation. Let's say someone from Vietnam, they want to buy from you, but they are unable to talk to you in English or type in English. So they can only type in Vietnamese. And when they type in Vietnamese, right, it can be translated directly to you in English. And when you type in English to them, it can be translated to them in Vietnamese so that you can all understand what you guys are communicating about and the conversation is smooth. Okay, and this, these are the 17 languages translated. And to know what are these 17 languages, just go to alibaba.com, go all the way to the bottom, and you can find out which language are there. Okay. Okay, data analytics star rating. This is also the one main important point that we provide uh, as a tool, marketing tool to our supply, go supplier. First of all, every single click. Every single customer view, every single inquiry is being recorded. This is something that only internet and digitalization provides. For example, do you actually know how many people, if you set up a retail store, do you actually know how many people walk in every day? Do you actually know, uh, you know how many stock you sold, lah, but you do not know how many people view your product. Let's say you have a three main core products in your shop. Product A, B, C. You do not know how many people view product A, B and C respectively. So let's say 1,000 people view product A, 1,000 people view product B, and also 1,000 people view product C. They have the same view, but the sales for A and B is very high, whereby C, product C, the sales is only like 10% or 5% of the, the view. Then you must think, why my product C is running? Why my product A, B is running so well? Then you must market your product C. Is there something wrong with my product C? Is there something on the market that's better than this? Is the price too expensive? Or is there something you need to improve? This is called data analytics. This will give you insights on how to improve your business structure. Uh, where is your market? Because it, there's a performance by country and region. So it will show you oh, in the Southeast Asia or in the North America or in Europe, uh, more people are searching for your product. More people are giving you inquiries. You're getting traffic from these places more often. So at the same time, you also can know the hottest product in your specific industry and the hottest product that buyer wants. Okay. Next. Okay. Now keyword trend. Okay. Just now, like I previously mentioned, okay, we give you the, the right to go and search for keyword trends, whereby you can see over the past month, Surgical mask free ply increased by search frequency of index 5,000. And you can see the supplier competition using the right keyword. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you are trying to sell mask in this period of time. If you do not know this, so first of all, you will just, okay, surgical mask uh, for sale. That's what you're going to type and then you're going to post. But when you do surgical mask, free ply surgical mask, you see, 2,400 competitor. You look at all the keywords, you look at all the supplying competition, you make a judgment. Okay, so which keyword is better for me to use? The supplying competition is the lowest at surgical mask pre ply and the search frequency is the highest. So more people are searching for surgical mask pre ply rather than the other keywords. So from this way, you can understand, oh, which keyword I'm supposed to use to get the best response to optimize my product better, to get higher traffic, okay? For your individual product, if you want to know the, the search ranking, uh, if your product is suitable for our platform, okay, please stay in touch with us after the, the webinar. We'll do a detailed profiling for you with our team of consultants, okay? Okay, business verification. Okay, this is also one of the uh, more interesting and important part. To do sales on online, uh, B2B especially, <clears throat> business uh, uh, always, always think about 
hey, I do something buy online, I have to send them the money first. What if I send them the money and then I don't receive my product? This is a basic human response. So Alibaba, we have this function called business verification, whereby we will verify your business for you for free. This is called third party authentication and verification. And the requirements for this is uh, actually very simple. Previously, you just need your ACRA. You must be locally registered. This is to check whether uh, your operational status is legal. And next, one of your directors must give approval uh, through their phone verification to see that, okay, your, your company is going to live or going to sell on Alibaba.com so that no fraud transaction can happen and it will not ruin your uh, company uh, reputation. And once you're verified by Alibaba, you'll receive this icon called the Go Supplier icon. And this will happen once a year. That means every single year when you renew, you will be verified by Alibaba. We will do the verification. And if you pass the verification, your years will increase. Like for example, this brief product private limited on Alibaba for 16 years. And how every year they are verified. Then when people look at you from all over the world, when they find you in your mini site and your product, they understand, hey, oh, this, this company is being verified by Alibaba. I can trust them. Because when you are a supplier on Alibaba.com, you are not going to send the goods. You are not going to send the product first. Sometimes you don't even run the production without receiving the deposit. Okay? So more than 90% of the buyers, they choose school suppliers because they know that, okay, this one is trusted by Alibaba. It's been verified. I don't have the, to send them the money and at night I sleep, I, I wake up, I think, well, what if they don't send me the goods? How? Okay? Next, buying request hub. Okay, this is called RFQ. Request for quotation falling under the same uh, category as Alibaba.com. Buyer now have the ability to not only search what they want, they have the ability to also go and post their buying request and let supplier go and search for them. So supplier can now be uh, take up a very proactive way to go and search for buyers, their, their consumer, their potential client. So uh, every day I will advise my client to at least spend one to two hours of their time on Alibaba.com. First, to optimize their account. Secondly, most importantly, to search for RFQ. Okay, let me show you some example of RFQ. You can go to www.sourcing.alibaba.com and whereby you can post your buying request and then using the keyword, let's say for example, you're selling uh, rice, you're selling fragrant rice, uh, and then you want to find buyers, importers, from you're, you're trying to import to uh, Vietnam or Malaysia or Indonesia, nearby countries. You can go and search and filter which are the country that you want to sell to and which are the um, quantity. Because when they post a uh, buying request, there will be a quantity at the below. For example, this one, uh, this example is mask. Three ply mask, you go and search. Uh, 15,000 RFQ over the past 21 days. Okay, Then you can search and secure them buyer's location, uh, the quantity. Is it open? Is it still open or is it already closed? Each RFQ, we only give them 10 quotation, meaning it's a first come first serve basis. Uh, supplier, you have to be very uh, proactive, like must be fast. You must go and keep searching. And then if you are ideal, okay, about your RFQ search, you can also add the keyword to your subscription. And then whenever people post uh, a RFQ re regards to your keyword that you already select your subscription, you'll receive a notification. And once the, the buyer, once the buyer receives 10 quotations, the RFQ will be closed. Because we don't want our buyers uh, to have a few of, they post something, then they receive 100 over quotation. How are they going to view and actually compare? So they, they can't. So at the same time, we give them 10, they can 10, it's very easy for them to compare and contrast and then look at which one they want, and then they talk and develop a business more. Okay? So this is eye cream. Okay, so these are the example of the RFQ that we have for you. Like this one, you see uh, quotation left six. This one got quotation left eight, quotation left nine. And you can see which country, destination they are buying from. Posted in Vietnam, posted in uh, UAE, Japan, Mongolia. Okay. Next. okay, this service is free. 
So if you have the time later, okay, you can go to sourcing.alibaba.com. If you do not really know how to use it, you can contact us and we will still assist you. Okay. So after this uh, was introduced in uh, 2016 September, over 3 billion USD trade volume posted by buyers a day, 50,000 over RFQ and six times more conversion rate than normal. Why, why more conversion rate than normal? Because now it's not the buyer come and talk to you, send you an inquiry asking you, hey, I want to find out more about this. I want to know this. Then they ask, 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 ask they don't buy. Okay? Now it's buyer. Okay, let's say I know, I know what I want to buy. My company uh, assigned me to buy uh, 20 sets of table. This size, this length, this color. I go and post it now. I don't have to go and look. Then now those, supplier that can fulfill my request. They'll come and talk to me, give me the price, give me the quotation, show, showcase to me their product, then I choose and then I should be buy. Because now buyer, they have understanding of what they want. Rather than oh, I'm asking this for fun, I want to know your price, I want to compare, compare very long after that, never buy. Okay? Okay, number 12, keyword advertising. Okay, keyword advertising is the, the function is actually, analogy is also very, very similar with Google AdWords, but it's uh, being run on our platform itself, Alibaba.com. So it gives you a better positioning, effective targeting as a pay-per-click. And this is only a go supplier function only. So for example, uh, supplying competition for masks, around 3,000 over supplier trying to sell masks on Alibaba.com over this period of time. And how can you optimize, even you do your optimization, do until very, very good. How can you appear in the top few pages? It's very, very hard. So how can you get your business outreach? Because you know that hey, my product have competition. Uh, it's really good. The price is really um, competitive as well. And the service you provide is also very good. How to get outreach to the first page? So we use keyword advertising, meaning let's say you choose the keyword um, mask and you post it. And when people search for the keyword, surgical mask, they will see you at the top five corner. So our slots are the first five, the right hand side, uh, the top 10 on the right. And at the bottom in the middle, there's four slots. These are all keyword advertising slots that our go supplier can actually use for more exposure and more um, traffic. So keyword cost is actually lower or to go to your bid. What do I mean? When your account performance is good, the actual cost of the keyword, let's say for example, this keyword, if you buy it, it's uh, maybe one USD per click. But if your performance is good and your product ranking is high, you can actually have a chance to get lower than what the bidding price is. And under this situation, no cost will occur. If clicked by customer from your own country, let's say you are from Singapore, you're posting this from Singapore, and then uh, Singaporeans, they go onto Alibaba.com and try to search for masks. And then they see your product and they click on your product. There will be no cost. And when clicked by Chinese go supplier, no cost. Clicked by Nigeria users, also no cost. Clicked by fraud software, also no cost. And the good thing is there's only one deduction per IP click. So let's say in the same office, everyone is using the same internet. Everyone's trying to source for masks and they all spawn your product because you're using keyword advertising, you're appearing at the top five. And then when they all click on you, there's only one deduction. There will be no constant deduction, like five people click. Every day can come and click, click, click. Uh, so there's, there's a, your, your credit will not keep running out. Okay. Next, traffic acquisition channel. So how, to, how does Alibaba actually help our uh, suppliers on, on, on our platform to succeed? Okay, this is uh, very important. We are the largest consumer of advertisement on Google. And we use YouTube, Instagram ads, Facebook ads to drive that traffic towards uh, Alibaba.com. So I'll let me share with you my screen and um, show you example of how we actually do that. Okay. So now you know everyone in the world, when they want to search for something and they want to find out from something, they will use Google. So let's say I want to buy fragrant um, rice supplier. I want to import fragrant rice now because uh, Singaporeans now, they all cook at home. They all cook at home and they, they want to, the, the rice in Singapore, not enough. Example only, uh, 
Okay, example. So when they go and look for fragrant rice supplier on Google, what do they see first? Okay, premium rice alibaba.com or premium rice alibaba.com. Then they see the rest. Okay, so alibaba.com is ranked on top. So if you were a gold supplier on alibaba.com and then people search for you on Google, your product on Google, you will appear for free. Okay, you must be a gold supplier. Lah. Then this function is free. Lah. Okay, you have a chance. Lah. Okay, you see like Ngambi Marketing, Chai Chun Food. Okay, I'm not sure if you know Chaishun Food, but Anambi, I think all of you should know. Flying Man, uh, Thailand Premium, Fragrant Rice. So from Google, the traffic is being driven from Google, Facebook, Instagram, and all kinds of social media platforms. And this is how businesses, you know, you can save a lot, a lot of money on Google AdWords. You know, if you if you don't you don't if you don't become like this, and you have to pay so much money for Google AdWords. If you understand Google AdWords analytics. Okay, so I'll go back to my slides. Okay, and other news platform like the Straight Times, Pin Interest, Payment Gateway, and of course our other Alliance uh, internal platform like Lazada. How about Timo? That's how we drive the traffic to you. Okay, on Straight Times, Google. Okay, so how the procedure is to sign up for to become an Alibaba Go supplier is actually very simple. You choose a package, you make payment, and then your company verification by the third party, the business verification, and then forward to activation. Okay, and today in collaboration with SBF, our package and promotion, we have three different package for different SME uh, needs because we need to understand your profile before we can actually advise you uh, which one is more suitable for you. Let's say you're a very big company, uh, your exposure you want is very big, then of course we cannot offer you something small and then give you the big results. It, we, we need to do a detailed profiling of your product, of your company, nature of business, direction of expansion, uh, market country, and then in order to provide you with a very clear-cut solution. Okay? So to find out more about this kind of solution and how, what we provide, you can actually contact us later after the webinar and we would like to introduce to you the pre-approved grant by Enterprise Singapore. So this grant is like a, how do you call it? It's like a one-stop uh, business solution on Alibaba.com. We will take care of every single thing for you, uh, includes from mini site design. It does not include the account itself. Huh? Okay, so mini site design, we will assist with product posting. We will assist you with uh, advanced method to post your uh, advertisement, to make use of if you want to use the keyword advertising and how you can actually expose yourself to some business strategy, cutting your operational costs. And so you look at this like, a, let's say you, if you have a outsource HR, you know some companies, they outsource their HR, they outsource their accounts, because um, they don't need a HR sitting in the office uh, every single month to do their payroll stuff and they don't need the accounts sitting in the office. So they outsource it to like uh, experts or more industry uh, qualified uh, companies to do it for them at a cheaper rate and they only work like maybe once or twice per month for them. So this, this thing, it works the same way. This is called e-commerce outsource. When you outsource your e-commerce uh, operation to us, we can uh, do everything for you for the whole month and at the same time you can only uh, you can relax and no need to uh, keep worry that oh you're going to hire someone you want to train him what if that person uh, join ready then after two to three months he learn ready then then leave again i need to train another person then every time on alibaba.com no one is optimizing for you no one is uh, replying the inquiries for you you have the traffic keep coming in but no one is there to follow up for you okay so this is the idea of the, the thing. Okay, lastly, we'll share some testimonial and sharing from our Singapore uh, suppliers uh, with you. So the first one we talk about is NeuroStyle. They are selling uh, some EEG system, uh, more towards healthcare and medical device. They have been a gold supplier since 2014. And one of their comments is, the most impressive order I, we got from was a Middle East customer who ordered a 10K item after shortly after the alibaba.com reply 
Okay, so you need to know that uh, Alibaba.com, you not only can sell those kind of small product, you can also sell this kind of uh, medical device product as long as uh, you have confidence in your product and you can know how to market it and you can use uh, some business strategy that we advise to my clients. Like for example, I tell them oh, every time you get an inquiry, you must keep following up with them. You must email them. You must try to find their either WhatsApp, WeChat, online. You know, you try to give them a call, try to video call with them, build confidence. Because like I said previously, traditionally and digitally, it works the same. When you go to exhibition, you showcase your product there. Buyers come and take your product, take your name card. You exchange name card with one another, but you, you don't go and follow up. You keep waiting for buyer to come and knock on your door to buy from you. No. You must keep, you get the buyer contact already, and you must keep going approaching them. Okay, so Hongse, Reviva manufacturer, has been with Alibaba.com for over 15 over years, 16 years. Okay, so they receive an inquiry and then the order in 5,000 and 10,000 pieces. This helped them to grow their global sales after joining Alibaba.com. Okay, they have actually two accounts on Alibaba.com, and one of the largest exporter for ginger tea and matcha tea series in singapore and their market audience is a uh, us okay next so i'll do some sharing wait uh, let me see play the video short video or sharing <laughs> Can you guys hear? You guys can't hear. Okay. Then uh, I'll share with you guys via my other screen. Hold on. Uh. Okay, so just wait for me for one minute. I'll share you guys. It's good to see uh, most of you are still with us here. Mm, yeah, the customer testimonial is uh, something that um, we have done recently because I, we, we feel that um, it's like you hear from us, uh, mm, we, uh, it's not good enough. So uh, hear from our customers. Let us show you to you right now. Uh, yeah. Our company actually focus on medical device manufacturing. Okay. Actually, we have a uh, uh, niche market in uh, neural diagnosis and neural okay. rehabilitation devices. Okay. So uh, actually, we focus on this uh, niche market, but. Uh, we uh, sell to the global market, okay. mo uh, more than 40 countries. We, our company actually uh, uh, established uh, in 2012. Mm -hmm. Then we took uh, something like one year to get uh, the product ready, get uh, all okay. the certification ready mm -hmm. to do the marketing and the sales. Yeah, uh, then um, in 2014, we are ready to, uh, to do the sales and marketing. So uh, the meanwhile, at the same time, we join uh, Alibaba. Okay. Alibaba, how to know Alibaba is very obvious uh, from many, many channels. <laughs> we can from okay. the social media channels, uh, from our friends and whatever, Taobao. Okay. We, we, so it's so, so popular. Okay. <laughs> uh, because we are doing the business for the global uh, customers, mm -hmm. so uh, the digital platform like uh, Alibaba is for sure is important. Yeah. So um, uh, from the beginning, we have to uh, work together with SEO. <laughs> Alibaba and others like Google and so on okay. so to, to develop our business so joining Alibaba is our essential 
practice. So <laughs> I don't think uh, many practice because from beginning we yeah. we need to join. Uh, we need to use uh, some some like e-commerce and digital okay. platform like this. So it's a good platform to, to practice. Yes, it's yeah. a very good platform for okay. us. Yes, you are providing uh, excellent help to us uh, and also uh, great support to us in terms of uh, every perspective. Yes, uh, yeah. our company. Okay, hold on now. Let me open the next one. Uh, our company name is Fish International Sourcing House and uh, we've been dealing in uh, trading and manufacturing of uh, seafood, frozen seafood food. Uh, yes, I think recently uh, Innovative Hub uh, did contact us and try to improve our uh, account, account performance. Yeah, with, uh, with uh, more daily uh, updates, okay. more daily interactions with the customers online and also uh, the improvement on our uh, uh, setup of our mini sites. Okay. We'll outreach more customers. Alibaba has consistently uh, given us. Orders, right? Yes. So it's, it's been a good avenue for us, for okay. our business. Uh, our company name is Fish International Sourcing House, and uh, we've been dealing in uh, trading and manufacturing. Okay, so um, are we done sharing with you for now? And see. Wait, uh, <laughs> okay, um, Tenny, you finish? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. But uh, do stay with me for Q&A. Okay. Okay, so yes, um, let me, uh, I actually just realized that there are some questions already. <laughs> I was too engrossed in Tenny's sharing. Okay, so some I have uh, replied. Maybe I just... Um, I won't quote names, I'll just read the question and answer. I'll just answer for everyone to hear in case some of you may also have the same question. Okay, so number one regarding the PPT, yes, uh, we will be sending the final version, PDF version to um, SPF for them to disseminate. Okay, and some of the very uh, real Qing audience also told us cannot hear. Yeah, I think we have fixed that. And uh, I also see questions like, okay, um, a very good question, right? Um, how do, do, does the platform take commission? No. Uh, okay, so um, maybe, maybe the person who asked this question is someone who is in the B2C environment. That means uh, you could be selling on some B2C platform. That's why you will ask this question. But for B2B, uh, marketplace like Alibaba.com, we, um, we do not take any commission. Meaning to say, uh, Tomorrow you close 10 containers also, you don't have to buy us uh, any fruit basket, okay? So, whatever you close on the platform uh, <coughs> is all yours. The platform don't take, innovative part don't take, nobody take anything from you, okay? Then, uh, let me see. Uh, someone also asked if we have successful customer to share. Yes, I think we shared a few. Of course, we have a lot. In fact, every month uh, we try to collect like two successful sharing from our customers. Mm, okay, so just to share a few um, some of um, some of the customers that are household brands like, on, on uh, that is with us. Uh, I'm sure you know uh, maybe Zheng Zhongping, Fu Hua, just now Tenny Show, right? Fu Hua, Zheng Zhongping, uh, the Dudu Fish Ball, and okay, uh, we have bigger names like Shinaida, um, ST, all these that are on our platform as well. But we also have a lot of traders Okay, um, traders meaning um, they don't carry their own brand, right? They sell something that doesn't belong to them. They can import uh, some famous brand from Korea, from anywhere, and then they sell in the local market. So in fact, on Alibaba.com, um, for Singapore suppliers, we do have a fair share of traders. Just now, the few names I mentioned, are they are brand owners, right? So, but we also have a lot of traders. Because if I mention the trader's name, maybe you don't really know them. But if you sometimes when you look at the product behind, it's imported by some of the traders. Yeah, the, those are the traders. Someone also asks, uh, yeah, uh, is there any minimum quantity to sell and buy? Okay, so for buying, uh, if you are buying from a gold supplier uh, on Alibaba.com, then you can look at the post. Usually, they will state their minimum MOQ. 
but if you think that you cannot meet the MOQ, please feel free to check with the seller. So if you are a seller, and um, of course, your MOQ can be one, right? But um, uh, we, we encourage you to have the uh, selling capacity because it's a B2B marketplace. So if people want to buy like 100 cartons and, and you say no, uh, then it, it's not that it cannot, but uh, it may, um, it may the, the, the buyer may feel that uh, it's B2B, so you at least must have some capacity in your production, right? Okay, so... Uh, do you have, did I miss out? Any question? Okay, someone said, um, let's say my manufacturing facility is based in China. Mm. Can I lease it in Singapore on Alibaba.com and ship directly from China? Yes, uh, it does not matter where your manufacturing facility is located in. As long as you lease it from Singapore, when buyers look for you on Alibaba.com, they see a Singapore flag, okay? Mm. And they talk to you, you can actually ship your product from maybe US, India, China to them as long as they pay you first and then they want to buy from you. And why sell as a seller from Singapore? Because Singapore is more economically recognized in the world, on a world level. And the trade is easier for finance to go through. Okay. And someone else asked how many SG supplier in Alibaba.com? Are they mostly trader? So most of them are sales office in Singapore, but have their manufacturing plant uh, nearby. Nearby means uh, maybe in Vietnam, Malaysia, Vietnam, Malaysia Indonesia. Indonesia yeah. mm. Okay, um, what are the process and requirement to register with Alibaba? Um, okay, so we just need you to be a, a Singapore legally registered company. Uh, Yes, that's all. So uh, remember just now Kenny share that there is a ver business verification process. Mm. So in that process, um, likely you will just need to submit your BIS file. That's all. Uh, you don't need to own your own e-commerce website. Actually, Alibaba.com, if you ask me, um, is one of the easiest platform for you to start your e-commerce journey. Mm. Mm. Because, um, I mean... Yeah, I mean, we, we, the, uh, my individual consultant can, uh, can really uh, talk to you separately offline and they will be able to do a business profile for you uh, and about your products so that you know, uh, yeah, how, who is your target market and what price you should be selling all this information. Uh, okay, I think we have a uh, elaborate on administration. Uh, is it this? Is it trying to say that you are selling a service? Uh, I don't quite understand. But if if that's my understanding, I think this um participant is maybe the company is doing service. Um, yeah. So um, uh, how should I answer this? Okay. Um, of course, if you if you go to the platform, you will see that uh there is um lesser service supplier compared to products supplier and of course there's a reason for this because for service right is um it, it's not like i can i cannot ship your service as a sample to the buyer to take a look right so there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh, disadvantage for service but we also still have service provider on the platform that is for the easier way of um, as if your service is easier way of uh, marketing, for example, um, logistic service, for example, um, transportation, limousine service that you want to advertise, like, um, like when people come to Singapore, they can engage you, you know, so, so we still have, uh, then again, I think it will be good that you can engage with our consultant to see exactly what service you provide and how we can market your customized service on our platform. Mm. Anything, anything, any question that we did not answer? Many people say, yes, the presentation slide will be shared after the webinar. Yes, we will. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, we want to sell organic products. Mm, 
Actually, I personally think that organic products works now. It's one of the trend, especially when um, the world is going going um, towards the healthy eco direction. We have a uh, we do, we have some suppliers selling the um like, you know like the tableware tableware the fork and spoon cutleries everything like that is eco they call it biodegradable right and we can see that actually um ever since two years ago he has been receiving the inquiries has been increasing I think generally the whole world is um going into eco and health direction. So if you ask me about organic product, I think it can sell. But of course, uh, it really depends on your um, selling price. Whether is it competitive, uh, competitive to the rest of the organic product sellers. Is there any fees signing up to Alibaba.com? Uh, yes, there is. But it's just there will be there will just be an annual fee. And trust me, it's really manageable. If you're talking about a business. Is really manageable the sign office, but usually we don't go out go into the sign office because in the last slide, uh, Kenny has shared that um, we are actually running a few grants, and one of the very uh, very productive and good grant that we are running with ESG now is the shared service grant. And today, if you are one of the participants, and um. I think just now can you share if you're one of the participants today, so in collaboration with uh, SPF, we are going to give you some promotion uh, that will free you the membership if you can make a decision within to this month. Okay, so um, I most likely my consultants will our consultants will get in touch with you after uh, this uh, online open session which then you all can discuss in detail um, which, what kind of package will suit you. Because if you have an in-house design team, then there's no need for you to take up our in-house start and set up package because your designer can do the job. But then if you are a really a, like a sole proprietor, like you only have yourself plus two staff and you want to do Alibaba, then we will, of course we will recommend you to take up our current grant with ESG because that one covers everything for one year for you. So you don't have to worry about hiring or anything. Yeah, so um, usually we, we, don't, we don't really like to uh, tell you the price like straight away and without, no, without understanding your needs. Nah. So we rather propose after we understand you and your business better. <coughs> um, okay, Tani, did I miss any question? Do you see any? Someone asked about the grant details. Okay, for for more in uh, for more details about the grant, we will talk to you after the webinar because uh, different <laughs> different profiling for different businesses, right? Is uh very hard for us to advise in in the whole general. Okay, um, but how many percent? It will be around seventy percent. Um. Yes. I mean, if the if the question is straightforward, then yes, it's like what Kenny shared. It will be seventy percent. It's a pre-approved grant. So for some um some of you maybe you have uh, applied for some grants before. So you know that usually you uh you need to write a business proposal and then uh, you submit to ESG and then the ES and then they will decide how many percent they will fund you. For our grant, it's not. We already got it approved. So you just need to provide us with uh, the form and um, the payment, then we can proceed with the grant as long as you qualify for SME. It's this straightforward. So you don't have to uh, worry about writing the business proposal and worrying about how many percent percentage you get. We already get the business proposal approved, a blanket approval for 150 SME. If you remember, I share in front of my slides, uh, 150 SME at least. And it's already 70%. Mm. Yes, mm, I think that's about all. Oh, we are on time, four o'clock, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, um, maybe we just wait for another few minutes for any other questions. Yes, any other burning <laughs> questions you might have? So that we can answer it. Mm. Mm. I, I think today the participants are very um 
are very interactive because mm. um, the last few webinars we did, uh, okay lah, because you know we are all Singaporeans, right? So usually Singaporeans don't really like to ask questions. Uh, we prefer offline. Uh, so, but today I'm very impressed to see the number of questions asked. Mm. This is my answer already, right? Do you have any suggestion? Mm. Okay, um, is it one more question came in? How long is the onboarding? Okay, the onboarding process, it will roughly, okay, roughly uh, take three to five days. But for you to be able to live, there are many, many different factors involved. First, you need to know are your products ready and are the design ready and once you live right the membership will start running the subscription will start running so there's many factors that we need to uh, calculate into the onboarding process but the onboarding is quite simple and straightforward you choose something that you want you understand it you pay for it and then we do it the very business verification for you and you can be live mm. Okay, um, I would also like to add on to um, Kenny's reply. Um, maybe some of you are worried uh, about um, whether you can produce the information, right? Okay, so um, Innovative Hub has a very uh, professional team of, we call them the service team, okay? Uh, so, so the name don't do them justice. Uh. In fact, they do a lot of things for, they will do a lot of things for you. So, um, in terms of production, if let's say you really um, like don't have any product pictures and everything, you can of course engage our professional service to do it. But if you don't want to spend the money, actually in today's context, right? All your iPhone all very good, right? Oh, okay, okay, sorry, I cannot just mention all your smartphone all very good, right? You can just use a, you know a normal camera or a normal smartphone to take pictures. Regarding the requirements, my service team, they will guide you along. What's the resolution? What's the background? How many views to take? Everything. So my, uh, our service team, they are actually with you throughout your Alibaba.com journey. So tomorrow, let's say for example, you sign up, okay? So they will be with you throughout this whole year during your membership. Um, they will be pestering you to help you perform better on the platform. Every month, trust me, they will call you at least one time. They will look at your performance. They will tell you which area you are not doing well. And then they will advise you how to do it so that you can be like, you know, the Fuhua bird nest that appear among 11,000 search results. You will appear on the top. Mm. Okay, someone asked, is there 24-7 support? Okay. Uh, this question, uh, I won't tell you no. Lah. <laughs> if you call me at night, we answer, then the answer might be yes. But if you call us at night, then we don't answer, then the answer is no. Okay, okay, okay no. Okay, so my colleague, Zhu Ling Ho, they like to joke a little bit. Lah, okay? okay, so he's not wrong because uh, most of our consultants, they are really very hardworking. So they probably still answer you on the weekends. But to be uh, to give you a professional answer, Alibaba.com itself, the platform, there's a live chat, customer service. For you to ask uh, most of the general questions. That means if you are if you meet some technical problem during weekend, you can straight away click on the live chat. Um, but I think you, you should know that the live chat is actually an AI. So after a few chat with the AI, if you, um, let's say you are not very satisfied and then you need a live person to talk to, Alibaba.com will switch you to a 24-7 department that handles inquiry. But then again, because this is, uh, if I'm not wrong, don't quote me, I think this is a shared um, response center. So uh, they may not be really um, specific into Alibaba.com B2B itself. But the rest of the days, uh, Monday to Friday, the service team is on 20, not 24-7 now, okay? At least mm, maybe until about the normal working hours, they will be around to answer your call. For all our customers, we have a WhatsApp group with your consultant and your service representative inside. So any problem you meet along the way, you can just share 
in the WhatsApp group. Uh, most likely someone will reply you in due time. Okay, so thank you, Sandy and uh, Tani for the insightful sharing. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those companies or participants who have mm. still have questions, please feel free to email me. I'm Derek. And mm. we have the one-to-one -one consultation together with SBF and Innovative Hub. So mm. feel free to contact us and help us to do the survey. The download link for the presentation will be generated after you submit the survey. And we come to the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. And we thank look forward you, to the next webinar. Thank, thank you, Derek. You, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank SBF. Derek. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.